Hello everyone, welcome to 3dedesignacademy.com. In this lesson, we'll learn about the square tool. The square tool is actually very similar to BiRail. And then you, you use it uh, requires of four curves in order to generate a surface. In a BiRail, uh, in order to create, uh, create a surface, you would have to click two generation curves like this and two rail curves like that. And it will create a, uh, it'll create a surface like this. The square, instead of click, uh, clicking the two generation curves and two rail curves, so you'll click them in a clockwise or a counterclockwise uh, order. So if I want to start with this curve, I will just go about like this in order to create a, uh, a surface. Now, uh, while there are some differences between a birail and a square, the resultant surfaces are actually very, very similar. However, there is some critical differences in the theoretical conception, which is actually can be seen in very limited examples. But in practical sense, that they are very similar, and there, and so it's just a matter of preference in which you want to use. Okay, so let me just show you one example in which uh, the difference between a square and a birail is very pronounced. So right now I have a sphere that I trimmed away. So let me just untrim it just to show you. So it's just a regular sphere that I grabbed from the under surface. Um, so let me just trim it back, uh, trim it back, just to show you the difference between the two. So a birail is a tool which creates a surface based on the section of the generation curve and runs it along the rail. Just color it this way so that you can see better. So it tries to maintain the section or the generation curve, shape of the generation curve. The square, on the other hand, tries to average out the four sides. So let me show you how this difference is displayed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first of all create a by rail to fill this hole. So I'm going to say generation curve here, generation curve two here rail curve or rail curve here. And as you can see, even though I didn't touch the continuity, it actually uh, filled in the sphere very nicely and it looks like it's part of the sphere. Now, if I were to do the same thing, let me just copy and paste this over to the other side. Uh, use the high, uh, highlighted. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same thing with the square and see what happens. So I'm gonna click here two, three, and four. And as you can see, it's actually created a very flat surface. Now, you, uh, notice that I didn't touch the continuity at all. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change all the sides back to, uh, to curvature. And even then, you'll notice that there's a little bit of flat spot on the top. It's because how the surfaces are generated from each tool is a little bit different. So like I said, the, uh, the by rail tool tries to carry the section curve all the way across this rail. And whereas the square, it tries to take a general, uh, tries to average out the four curves or the four sides. So you'll see that it's a little bit flat on the top. However, this is one example where you can see the difference, but in most cases, there really isn't a lot of difference. Let me show you. So let me just put these back in the sphere layer and let me bring this, these curves back. So I'm going to create a by rail like this and I'm going to create a square like that. Now all the edges are the same. So let's see if there's any difference between the two surfaces. And like this. So there is a difference, but it is such a small and insignificant difference. It just doesn't really matter that much in when you're actually modeling a surface which has less sections. So in most cases, when you're pr uh, building primary surfaces of, uh, of um, products or vehicles, the surfaces usually tend to be a little bit flatter. 
So it is a very rare in um, that you'll ever find a significant difference between using a rail or a, a square. All right. Um, let me just go through some of the tips that you can use. So like a by rail, a square requires a four sides. So let's say you accidentally move one of the curves and there's a position failure. So let's say I just moved this slightly. So in this case, you'll see that the square surface is actually, uh, let me just hide the curves for a second. And you'll see that the square, square edge, the edge of the square surface that I just built actually ha has a dashed line instead of a solid line. So in this case, what you need to do is to find out what's, uh, what's going on. This means that the, one of the edges is not positional to each other. I purposely, uh, so as you can see, there's a little gap, so that's what happened. So what you need to do is uh, control shift, left mouse button, uh, middle mouse button, query the history, and find out where the problem is. So right now, in, uh, you'll see a red arrow, in which case uh, the computer displays, or the software displays where the problem is. So this is one way to check out what the problem is, and if you zoom in, you'll see that there's a little bit of a gap between the two curves. All you have to do is make sure the curves are touching like this. And the square surface is back to the solid line. And the history is good. All right, that concludes this lesson. And thank you for watching.